Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Nostal ah, Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And we are back. I, I stumbled upon my words because I was super excited. Um, because I just got done watching The Real Housewives of Salt Lake Season. That's that. Salt Lake City. Again, the words. Words are hard. Um, I identify with Brittany today. Um, <laughs> for those who've been watching the first two episodes, y'all, y'all know what that is. But anyway. Um, yes, this is Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and this is season five, and this is episode three, and this is called Basketball, Bobbleheads, and Brow Girl. And, um, this, I love this franchise. I laughed quite a few times in this episode. There's multiple comedic reliefs on the, on, on the show, like you're, and, oh, let me just make it clear. I think I love Bronwyn. I don't know how it is, but this is the second time in a row that I fell in love with a new cast member. Now, Monica, I was kind of sighing her a little bit because the money was slightly funny. But Bronwyn, I think she's a real deal. And the way she got Miss Heather Gay and Lisa Barlow together at the very end. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I was like, oh, she she knows she belongs here and she knows where she stands and she's very confident. She's like, you know what? I have the coins here and none of y'all could ever. <laughs> like, when your husband is one of the founders of the Palm Pilot and also now owns a hedge fund, you can be her. That's just, that's what it gave for me. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. So we start off with the Housewives montage. It's a little bit longer of a Housewives montage than usual. So Whitney's with her husband, getting ready for the trip to Milwaukee with the girls. And um, by the way, it is in February when they're going, but for one of the activities that they're doing, that's actually prime time to go. So yes, for the reason, but also otherwise, <laughs> for those who live in Midwest, me included, February is when we're leaving the Midwest. We don't go to the Midwest in February, <laughs> but for the reason why they're doing this trip, it makes sense. Um, because from last episode, we found out Trixie, um, they're having like a drag show that I believe um, Whitney's hosting. So she invited all the girls. So that's what's happening there. Anyway, so she also does recap with her husband how things went with the girls at Heather's event. Because <laughs> I don't know, if, I feel like Whitney was being truthful about she was glad that Heather set up the event to clear the air. But then the producers were shady and showed them not clearing the air. All the arguments. <laughs> and for those who don't know, the other reason why this show is so good is because the producers, even though these are the same producers for like um, Roni, the, the reboot, but these producers are top notch. They're so good. <laughs> They're so good. Um, but anyway, so then next we have Meredith and Seth They're, and Meredith is also getting ready for the trip because she is going because it's a cast trip. I, I love how she pretended she wasn't, she act like she wasn't going to go. It was like, girl, Bravo's paying for this, you're going. Um, and so she basically says she still has her issues with Whitney, but she's going to go. And then Seth's like, just ignore her and like talk to like Heather and like Lisa. And... Seth says something else snarky too, but it's Seth. Um, them two are awkward. <laughs> and then from there, we see that Todd, um, who's Bronwyn's husband, and he asks, like, are you ready to, like, do this girls trip with this group? Kind of like, because, you know, Bronwyn, um, she was not happy about how things ended last time they were all there. And so Bronwyn was like, as ready as I'm going to ever be. And so she had like this mannequin, like artsy mannequin 
that like is a hand. She's like, either I could come with peace and high five, or I could do the middle to them. <laughs> and it was cute. So then from there, and by the way, Todd, I I I love them. They're cute together. I I see how they work. Anyway, even though at first I was judging it. <laughs> for those who watched my last review, y'all know initially I was judging it just for the sheer fact that age difference is age difference. Seeing and I don't know if personally I can do that, but seeing the dynamic, I'm like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be too picky. <laughs> anyway, um, Roman also does share that she didn't like that um, Lisa did not come to her defense. So her main grievances is actually with Lisa. Yeah, she has a little bit of grievances with Heather, but not as much. Lisa's where, because we, you know, and it should. I'm kind of popping around, but Bronwyn does share um, when she talks to, because um, she talks to Angie about later on too. She's known Lisa for years. She's known Lisa since 2019. Um, that I guess that's when they first met. And so outside the show. So she really did feel, felt a way that Lisa did not really come to her defense at all when um, Heather tried to confront her. And... Then we see, anyway, then the last scene that we see um, that kind of kicks all this off with this montage is Mary is getting ready as well, but then she calls Whitney. And for those who've been watching the show from the beginning, I feel like we all assumed Mary was going to call say she wasn't coming. No, Mary is, Mary has also been like, I feel like Bronwyn and Mary are the two MVP. Honestly, Mary, Angie, and Bronwyn, if them three become like a clique, I would love to see it. So far, them three are the ones for me. I like, I, I love them. But anyway, Mary calls um, Whitney, though, to um, let her know that she's going, but she's going to fly on her own. Because Mary is very introverted for the most part, which is why I feel like part of it, part of why we haven't really seen much of her on this show, even though she's full-time before. She's very closed off. Um, I do wonder if we're going to get more answers on that as the season progresses. I feel like we are because she's been... I've learned more about her the last three episodes, this episode included, than, I've, than the whole entire time she's been on this show. And she was actually the reason why this show even came to be, by the way. For those who don't know, um, the producers of this franchise wanted to build this show around her because of Mary being so interesting. So for everyone who be trying to talk all the things about her, I know she's problematic, but the producers, this is why Mary gets away with the things she gets away with. Cause they know she's that missing ingredient for this show. And honestly, she is one of the main reasons why I'm watching. She actually is the main reason why I'm watching this show. I would not watch this show if she wasn't on it. I, I did not watch the season that she wasn't on it, actually. So there's that. Anyway. Okay. So next, we see that Angie <laughs> is also getting ready. And Angie handmade her sunglasses. Because for those who know, Angie's thing is sunglasses. She has these ridiculous looking in her cases, these are not sunglasses. They're hater blockers. She be having hater blockers on. Because they're just like... <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be like something like this. I honestly could see her with glasses that look like this. I could totally see it. It would make sense to me. But anyway, she makes glasses out of a Greek flag. So she has a Greek flag glasses. And then she has like her Greek... She has like a Greek basketball um, jersey with Giannis on it. And like, because <laughs> she's like, I hope I run into him while I'm in Milwaukee, the Greek freak. And I was just like, <laughs> I love it. I was like, <laughs> and one thing about Angie is she is campy. She is very over the top. But for whatever reason, when she does it, it works for her. I feel like when she tries not to do it, it actually doesn't work for her. I think she naturally is just kind of like, I mean, I feel like it's her. I don't think she's putting on for the camera. I think she's just naturally over the top. And I love it. 
keep doing this because it cracks me up. I was I was dying. I was like, oh my gosh, but this girl's wild. And anyway, so she does actually talk to her husband though about what she found out. So she got some tea and some receipts. And what she finds out is her brow girl, hence the title of this episode, person who does her brows, um, has been talking to Jared. The same Jared that Brittany's talking to. And not trying to be shady, but like Jared's been hopping in her DMs. It wasn't so the brow girl was not going after her. Jared was going into her DMs and sharing and kind of being inappropriate and being very, very flirty and, and kind of just, you know, moving like a single man. Even though Brittany let Brittany tell it, that's her man, her man, her man, her man, her man. And the thing is, though, Angie has the receipts. She, like, actually has screenshots of everything that was said. Because clearly this brow girl is not really interested in him like that either. And, I mean, is, is this really a surprise? No. It was very clear that this dude's leading her on. And I, I do want to know more about Brittany. Brittany, I, I'm the, I never thought I would say this. And I, I don't think she's, I, I need to know more about her. I'm actually intrigued. Because of how, I don't think she's necessarily dumb, but I do think, well, I don't think I know, she is very, um, her growth is stunted as far as like social norms and um, common sense. Like not only common sense, but I would say street smarts. There we go. Um, which you know, sometimes it's common sense depending on, you know, the circumstances clearly. But, um, yeah, that Mormonism did, did some wonders on her and not in a good way. Um, and I want to know more to see how she is this way because even as this episode progresses and we get more of her story, even with the little bit that we're getting, man, I, I actually feel for her. Um, Side note, I do hope at some point in time, Mary and um, Brittany can actually talk things out. Because I feel like once, I feel like once uh, Mary understands where Brittany's coming from, I don't think she'll judge her as harshly. Because I feel like Mary, from her perspective, she thought she was being judged by her, but it's clear she was not. Um... But it's also because we're watching this show. I'm sure in person it probably came off a certain way because we don't know these people. But yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Anyway, you'll understand why I'm talking more about it in a little bit. But so anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent there. But Angie is just trying to figure out, should I tell her or not? And her husband's like, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, Yes, say something. But if not, leave it alone. Because, you know, either she's going to receive it or she's not. There's going to be no happy medium with that. Child, the way I felt like Ashley Miller, um, shout out to Ashley M Miller. She's a fellow YouTuber. She reviews a lot of shows. Not She mainly reviews the black shows and um, well, a lot of the black shows like Actually, no. I've been watching more of what it is with her when she does a recap of the week. Um, but she also just, she, she's awesome. She's dope. She's actually one of the people that inspired me to start, who inspired me to do my own YouTube channel also. But anyway, she's from Chicago. And the reason why I mention her is because both of us have a similar problem, especially if you have the windows open. I'm on a main street. So, and I'm, I live across the street from a retirement community. So, ambulances. Um, <laughs> and sometimes in her videos, it happens, and I'm just like, yeah. Another day in the shy. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, but it's the morning of the trip, and um, all the ladies are waiting for a private plane. Everyone minus, um, uh, wow, Mary, because we... we you know, Mary already mentioned she's going on her own. 
Um, and Bronwyn, she shows up and she's kind of being a little cold towards Lisa because Lisa's like, I can help you with your things. And Bronwyn's was like, nah, it's all good. And um, because Bronwyn was still is falling away, we already know why. And um, fast forward, they have like all the fixings and stuff on the jet. It's cute. But um, they arrive to Milwaukee and um, Heather is excited about it. And she actually talks about the correct way to enunciate Milwaukee. It's not how I'm saying it. I forgot how, how it was said, but like the uh, Algonquin way, because it's an Algonquin word. And Algonquin is a, um, one of the main tribes here um, in this area. <laughs> Because it's not just Milwaukee. Clearly, the Algonquin tribe was also part of Illinois as well. It's like this this region, basically. Because um, Milwaukee and Chicago ain't that far away from each other. So, a little bit of history. Um, they, talk, they go into that. And then we go to Mary. Mary actually gets there before they do to the hotel that they're staying at. Which, side note, I want to try to stay at this hotel next time I'm in Milwaukee. I actually might do a day trip and maybe stay the night in Milwaukee. Um, I've never done that before, but I kind of am curious. I kind of want to do that. Maybe. Um, I will just need to have a good reason. Um, maybe a concert or maybe an NBA game. I don't know. The Bulls are, haven't been doing well for a while, so I don't know. And I'm not a Bucks fan, so there's that. But anyway, um, so, but Mary does share that she loves Milwaukee because it reminds her of her dad because her dad's from Milwaukee. We found that out last episode. But then we also find out another tidbit that only Mary Cosby can provide. She's like, yeah, um, I also found out that, um, so she's like, I love Milwaukee. It reminds me of my dad. And, um, yeah, I found out that my dad used to live a street away from Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? And she's like, yeah, on the way to work, he would always just, like, complain about the smells. Like, what is that smell? And then fast forward, um, he gets, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer gets arrested. And, um, yeah, my dad kind of saw the whole thing happen. And mainly because he was being nosy. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> And I'm going to hold you. When she said this, I had to rewind the, the scene. I was like, wait, what? Mary, what? She's like, yeah. Random fact. <laughs> I was like, so her dad lived a, a street away from child. I can't. Um, but anyway, they get to the hotel. The rest ladies get to the hotel. And the hotel is very, very nice. And um, again, I already mentioned that. But we also find out more about Melly. So Melly is friends with um, Whitney. They've known each other for a super long time. I forgot how long they've known each other, but it's, I think it's been since college or something like that. It's been a while. Um, they're actual friends in real life. And, um, and she has a nice career, but then she also has lots. Of, she has, like, I think three kids. Um, I don't. I don't think she's Mormon, but I don't know. Um, so as much as we talked about Melly this episode, we still don't know much about Melly, which kind of worries me. I don't know if she's going to be back because Brittany's been kind of just making it say, hey, I'm here. But Melly, she needs to kind of step up a little bit more because as much as we know that she's friends with Whitney, that's kind of all we know. Um well, we find out a little bit more later on, but not in a good way. Um, and then it does also come up that Jack is having some health issues. Because um, Brittany actually asked, um, you know, Lisa, how is Jack doing? And apparently he's having issues like stomach pains. And um, the ladies asked, like, well, can you go and, like, help him? Because we know that Jack, this is her oldest son. He's on a mission right now. Um, and, um, so they asked, like, is she allowed to intervene, you know, for this reason and kind of like, you know, put a hold on it. She's like, yes, I am. But Jack doesn't want me to do that. 
So Jack is like, I'm going to figure it out on my own and just, just leave me be. And you can tell Lisa is falling apart. Um, she starts breaking down when she's talking more and more about it. Cause this is the first time where he's ever had some health concerns like this and she's n not near him and she can't really be a mother. So it's a really touching moment. And even Mary like goes to hug her because she's like, girl, you're being human. That's just what happens. And, um, it was nice to see a softer side of literally both Lisa and then even Mary at this moment. Cause Mary kind of did let her guard down. It's like, I'm going to give you a hug because that's serious, you know? And, um, but then afterwards we do find out though, that the ladies are going to a Bucks game, which if you didn't know by how, I feel like the ladies already knew this, but they're pretending they didn't know. Because, hello, why would Angie do the most and have, like, a whole entire Greek outfit, a basketball-related Greek outfit, if she didn't know she was going to this game? Hello. But anyway. And then, but before all the ladies go to the Bucks game, um, some of the ladies are going to go to a bobblehead museum. And <laughs> Whitney found out that... That is another thing Milwaukee's known for, for having a bobblehead museum as a callback to when Mary called Whitney a bobblehead. And Mary and her professionals like, you know what? Whitney's longer a bobblehead. I've forgiven her. We're all good. There's a new bobblehead in town. So she shades Br Brittany in the confessional because the, the shady producers pan right over to Brittany. And we kind of knew that's what that was. So half the ladies went to that. And then the other half went to a casino and that's kind of where things leave off here so another little mini montage where mary call where mary's son calls her and asks her for money and check instead of checking in on her to make sure she gets there safely and whatnot and mary even calls out she's like oh you're not gonna make sure i got here safely and um yeah um that elephant in the room hope i so, through the season, we see that it's discussed, but I don't know how much is really discussed. Hopefully, the elephant in the room does get spoken about because even in that FaceTime call, her son did not sound great. Um, if you know, you know. But anyway, so there's a, then there's a Housewives montage of the ladies getting ready to go out to the city um, Brittany tries to FaceTime Jared and he doesn't pick up shocker. And this is a running theme. Also side note, this whole entire episode where Brittany just tries to contact Jared. She tried to contact this man like three or four times, same day. And it's just, it's, it's team too much. And before and a lot of the ladies end up talking to her about it, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Um, Bronwyn is getting glammed up in her room. And then Angie comes into her room and checks in on her. And um, Bronwyn does state that she is upset with both Heather and Lisa. Um, and also spills a little bit of tea that, you know... She knows everything that was talked about in that car. It wasn't like Bronwyn was the only one talking trash. Which, I love it. I love that angle that she's doing. Because she's like, so just because I'm new, I can't talk the trash. She has a point. She's like, look. We can't have it both ways now. And we find out from the producers that they were talking mad cash-ish. And not really um, Bronwyn as much. I think she was kind of just there. Um, at least the producers didn't really show Bronwyn talking about it. Just kind of showed her just there kind of co-signing, if you will, um, about um, Melly is about to be on the blacklist from Nordstrom's because she keeps returning her things. And in Housewives Loyal, 
Like, so in the housewives world, that's one thing. A lot of housewives be fronting. Especially this franchise. This franchise is notorious for having a housewife who be pretending they got it, but they ain't got it. I think that was one of the main reasons why we loved Monica, because she at least wasn't pretending that she had it. She's like, I ain't got it. <laughs> in the words of Tasha K, I ain't got it. Um, but the problem is the premise of this show is you should have it. Like that is the premise of the whole entire show. You're not really supposed to be on this show for real, for real. If you, um, or like the rest of us per se, right? Like you're this, the premise of the show is you're supposed to look like, you know, you are the Joneses. You're not trying to keep up with the Joneses because you are the Joneses. Anyway. So this is not shocking because this has been talked about. Other housewives have been accused of similar things, different stores. Um, so what a lot of housewives will do is they'll buy these expensive pieces and return it. And you can't do that high end stores regularly like that. Um, Nordstrom's they and there and also too Nordstrom's has a really decent return policy. You could return anything back, but. You're not really supposed to like do that like all the time. They're going to give you crap after a while if you keep doing that. And clearly she does it like a lot. Because um, I've never heard of a blacklist from Nordstrom's from doing that. Um, but I don't return things from Nordstrom's often. I don't even think, I honestly don't think I've shopped at Nordstrom's that often. That's not really my style. I'm more of a New York and company girl or like a, um, even a Saks. Every once in a while, Saks. Um, not often, but every once in a while. And then, like, Banana Republic. I haven't shopped at Baran Banana Republic for a while. Honestly, I really shopped high in fashion in a minute. Um, for those who follow my channel, my weight lately has been fluctuating a little too much. And until that weight is stable, we're not buying new clothes. That's just where I'm at with it. <laughs> So anyway, um, Bronwyn, though, this is being mentioned because Bronwyn is making it clear. And she's talk and she basically is telling, like, she's talking to Angie and calling the thing a thing. She's like, look, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to treat me like I'm the new girl. And, you know, basically treat, trying to treat me like a little bitch. I ain't going to be anyone's little bitch. <laughs> I was like, well, damn. There we go. So Broadway made clear she's not kissing anyone's behind on the, in, with this group. She's like, I'm her. I don't need to pretend that I'm not her because I am her. And I'm like, and Angie, I wish Angie would have had this in energy. Because I think this is what stopped Angie from being on the show right away. Because Angie is coming around to having that kind of conf conf uh, confidence. But she'll have Bronwyn confidence because, if anything, Bronwyn also, also has the audacity, um, which I love it because it's great for people like me who watches this show. I'm like, oh, yes. Someone needs to, like, let these girls know, like, I am not the one or the two. I'm her. I belong on this show. And that's that on that. Now, the only thing about it is I am curious to how Bronwyn got on the show. If Lisa truly is the one who got her on the show, this is shady. But I'm also here for it. But anyway. So basically to end this, she says, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus yet on what was said in that car. But I am turning the bus on. And I was like, ooh, ooh, that's a read. <laughs> that is a read. Um, so then in the other room, we see that Whitney and Heather are taking shots together and they're joking about them being cousins and that whole deal. And then, um, you know, Heather asked Whitney, how are her and Meredith doing? They're still not good. Meredith is not letting things go. Because um, I know, hold you, I feel like this Meredith and Whitney thing is one-sided. I think it's Meredith. Meredith doesn't like Whitney. Yet. I think that's all it is. Because um, I think Whitney's ready to just move forward. Um and then Whitney asked about Heather and Bronwyn, 
And Heather is just kind of being a little delusional about it. She's like, yeah, I think she's being cold, but I think things are okay. And it's like, girl, things are not okay. <laughs> and Heather is making a point, though, that she is not letting go of this car conversation because she's just like, I know she said that she told you what she said, but I still don't like this. And Whitney is making it clear, like, girl, I like her. The, nothing's changing over here. I like her. I think she's being genuine. Um, yeah, the tone and delivery was different, but the message was the same on both sides. And you can see it both ways. You can either see it from like Heather's perspective where it comes off somewhat manipulative. And it might be a little bit, but it's a show at the end of the day, you know? Um, and we know that the show isn't all the way about friendships. It's also about staying on the show. So, I mean, hello. But also, too, I think Bronwyn was just being a cheerleader because this was her friend. So she was taking her friend off of face value, but then she went to go and get her own opinion of her and realized, oh, man, I actually like her, and then told her what was said. I feel like that was really what happened. Like, yeah, you know, we, we said some things, but whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, that happens all the time. It's not as deep as what Heather's trying to make it to be. Um, Heather's trying to make it where it's more um, divisive than what it is. At least that's how I feel. And we see towards the end of the episode, Whitney feels the same way. But anyway. So, yeah. So all the girls are ready. And then we see that... Angie is completely Greeked out. <laughs> she has a Greek flag. It's a cape. It's a whole thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, girl. <laughs> I cackled when I saw this, but I loved it. And um, we find out, though, that Heather, Meredith, Lisa, Brittany, and Angie are the, all, are the ladies are going to the casino. And then... Um, Lisa, as they're going there, having a good time, having their drinks, gambling, Lisa mentions how, as Mormons, are, they're not really supposed to be at a casino like at all. They're not supposed to be even drinking like that at all. You're also not even supposed to be watching And porn. then Lisa's like, this is why I say I'm Mormon 2.0. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> and I still, according to like most people that watch this show, I don't think the Mormon 2.0 is a real thing. I think this is what Lisa just created in her head. Um, but then um, on the other side, we have the Mary, Melly, um, Bronwyn, and um, Whitney. They went to the Bobblehead Museum. It was cute for what it was, but not... I feel like they probably spent the least time... Well, the, the producers did make it where they would stay longer than what they probably would have stayed. Because they turned... Um, the bobblehead museum they had like a scavenger hunt game where they got to find the bobbleheads and it was cute and it did end where they um found these bobbleheads of like the golden girls and then them four compare themselves to the golden girls that was kind of cute and funny and the producers like inserted their faces with the golden girls because <laughs> i believe uh, mary said that she's bros um Whitney says she's Sophia. Melly says she was Blanche. And then um, Bronwyn was Dorothy. I don't know if I agree with that all the way, though. I feel like, I feel like Whitney is Blanche. But I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about that. But anyway, um... Brittany and Lisa, so back at the casino, Brittany and Lisa are talking about Jared again because Brittany is trying to contact Jared yet again. And Lisa's trying to let her know, like, girl, leave him alone. Like, have a good time with the girls. Like, your identity cannot be about this dude, especially a dude who's not interested in you like that. Because Lisa was the one, one of the ones last episode that was like, you know, very kindly trying to tell her, like, dude, you're being played. <laughs> and 
Brittany still is showing that she's receiving it, but her actions are not matching that she's receiving it. She's not receiving it. She's still checking in on him. Because then afterwards, he ends up texting her back after he missed the FaceTime and said, oh, I didn't see your FaceTime. And um, Lisa was like, can I use your phone? Do you mind if I do the texting for you? And Lisa's like, I'm having a good time with my girls. I'll talk to you later. Like, kind of just let her let them know, like, look, I'm not waiting on you, this, that, and this, Senna. And it would have hit if Lisa, if um, Brittany would have just left it alone after that. But the problem is, she's so thirsty for this guy, she didn't let it go. So even he didn't buy it. Anyway... Also, too, how many of y'all think that he's stringing her along because he really wants to be on the show? I think so. Because we did get a cameo of him a little bit later on. Through FaceTime. That might be the only reason why he is stringing her along. Just saying. Anyway. So then we have Heather and Meredith on the side. They go to get shots. And they talk about Whitney. And Meredith is like, I know Whitney says that she wanted, she called, you know, me bringing the caviar and olive branch. But how is it olive branch that I'm bring, bringing, paying for caviar and bringing caviar to you all to eat? How is her, how is that her giving me olive branch? I'm like, it, it, it isn't. <laughs> And so, yeah, Heather's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Meredith then spills some tea and says that um, there's been rumors that um, Whitney's products are basically Alibaba, Alibaba's knockoffs, but then she's basically charging like 10 to 20 times the price, but it's basically Alibaba products. Yeah. And then we see that Lisa and Meredith talked about earlier on, and Lisa's the one who brought it up first. But I don't know. It seems very suspect because if you have watched previous seasons, y'all know that Meredith, has done this every single season, but claims that she's not the one who started the rumors. Yet no one has heard of these rumors until this show, until she brought it on camera. So this time she brought it up on camera, and then Heather, kind of seeing the play a little bit, I believe, she's like, so are you going to talk to Whitney about it? And, um... You know, and bring it to her attention that you've been hearing this to kind of help her. Like, And then, you know, even Heather even suggests it not from a messy standpoint. She's like, yeah, you know, you have a lot more experience with having businesses. You can kind of maybe walk her through and, you know, kind of, you know, encourage her and let her know like, hey, you can get past these rumors, this and this and that. And... Meredith is like, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. So in her confessional, Meredith, and the, she tries to say, like, it's going to look like I'm the one who's starting the rumor if I do it. So I'd rather Heather does it instead. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds like very similar to what you did last season with Monica and all the other seasons. Well, well actually, didn't Meredith do the same thing to Whitney? Have Whitney... Um, put something out there that she's the one who that that came from her first. <laughs> Meredith, I got my good eye on got my good eye on you. As much as we want to say that Whitney's messy, who doesn't take any accountability, child pot pot meat kettle. So all the ladies um, meet up again, and they're all at the Bucks, and they're getting the VIP treatment. So right away they meet the Bucks president. And they get to sit in and to practice. So while the guys are practicing. And then the ladies meet Damian Lillard. <laughs> and I ain't going to hold you. That's kind of the only reason why I will go to a Bucks game. Because I actually do want to see Damian Lillard. I know he's married. 
But I do have, I have a little bit of a crush on them. So maybe I will go to a Bucks game so I can just, you know, see see that. But I'll make sure at least, like, they're playing, like, the Bulls or Golden State or something. Like, because I kind of do want to see Golden State, too. I want, I, you know what? So for those who don't know, I've never been to an NBA game. I've only been to, like, a G League game. Um, and I really want to go to an NBA game this this season. Um, I missed my opportunity to go to a WNBA game because um, they're in the playoffs right now. And the sky isn't going to, I don't think they're going to do anything. I don't even think, I'm not even sure if they're still in. I don't think so. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. So then um, they get the tour and all that stuff. And also, Angie's doing the most with her Greek outfit on. And um, they do end up at, in the suite. Um, and Mary then, you know, says she has the sniffles. And Angie goes like, oh, I can go to the restroom, get you some Kleenex or something like that. And she's like, no, 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 I don't use public restrooms. And Mary then proceeds to tell us how to get a UTI <laughs> on national TV. Because she doesn't use public restrooms. And instead, she decides to tell us the scientific method of using a tampon and that should stop you from having to pee. As someone who also has a phobia of public restrooms, do not follow this. <laughs> oh, it's, I, I cackled in more ways than one because I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. That is some that is some delusional logic you would tell yourself as someone because I'm also someone who has a phobia of public restrooms and I I've gone past it clearly for the most part because I have to because I'm a runner and when I'm a runner I don't even think about it it's weird when I go to do a race I don't even think about it at all I'll use a restroom anywhere and everywhere because I have to get this run in but when it comes like my day to day. I'm very weird about using restroom, public restroom still to this day. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I had something very traumatic happen when I was a little girl. Nothing demonic or anything, nothing evil like that. Um, I had to use the restroom really, really bad on one of my long trips to Alabama. because My dad does not fly to Alabama. We do the long drive to see family. And we stopped at like a gas station and it was like a gas station, a, you know, in the South, South, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it wrong on purpose because this was the most disgusting restroom I've ever seen in my life. And I was traumatized. <laughs> I mean, disgusting. And I was a little girl and I never forgot it. And ever since then, I've had such a phobia of public restrooms. Yeah. That's a problem if you're someone like me who has a really good memory. You just sometimes wish you did not have a really good memory like I do. <laughs> Side note, if y'all didn't know, you could tell Mary cracked me up this episode. So anyway, so Brittany calls Jared yet again, and he answers this time. Of course, he's going to answer this time. And Lisa is like sitting, you know, um, in front of her. She's like, oh, you called him. And then also then we have Angie and Bronwyn. They're sitting be right directly behind her. And I feel like Angie couldn't take it anymore. She's like, I have to say something. So, so Angie, I think, intentionally started speaking loud enough where Brittany can hear this because she just wanted it to be known that this dude's basula. Leave this guy alone. And so she talks to Bronwyn and tells Bronwyn about um, the brow girl and how Jared's been DMing her. And, um, and then she shows receipts and she actually starts reading what Jared was saying and we actually see what all he was saying and one of the main things that he says in his text is that Brittany is not his girlfriend makes it plain and simple because Brittany at this point is still thinking that this is her man even though multiple people have told her this is not her man 
But at least this time around when she's talking about it, this time around at least, the good news is with the brow girl and all this happening, it says from Jared himself, Brittany is not my girlfriend. It is spelled out clear as day now. And Brittany can overhear all this as she's talking to Jared. So she hangs up from Jared and then she's like, are y'all talking about me? And, um, oh, right before this, um, Angie is asking Brown, what should I tell her or should I not? And Brown was like, you should, you should, you should definitely say something. Um, and also too, I will give some grace. Th this is in the middle of the game. So it is loud where maybe she wouldn't hear her, but like, I I'm one of those people, if I hear my name, I hear my name. <laughs> it could be loud as day, but all of a sudden I hear my name, I'm like, I'm one of them. So I'm pretty sure she, and, and she did hear her name, and so she did confront her. And um, Angie straight up told her, like, look, I did, and, and you can tell Angie is saying it not to be messy. She's saying it to let her know, like, dude, this guy is playing you. And I have the proof that he's playing you. I didn't want to come out this way. He 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 doesn't claim you. And he straight up said and, and basically explained the whole thing to her. And I felt so bad for Brittany in this moment because she is broken down. She immediately excuses herself and she's heartbroken. Um Meredith does go behind her to check up on her and I was worried at first, but okay, sorry about that. Uh, my allergies, <laughs> speaking of allergies. um, So Meredith does go behind her to the restroom to console her. And I was worried initially because we know that Angie and Meredith do not get along. Um, so I was hoping this was not gonna be a storyline storyline. But instead, this was definitely more of a sisterhood situation where all the women are coming together um, for her. Um, and Meredith does share some wisdom with her. She's like, I know this is not the way you wanted to hear this, but you needed to hear that. Like, unfortunately, the way you found out, it's messed up, but it needed to happen before it got any further along. Because... Again, this dude was stringing her along and she just was accepting it. And um, Brittany does state, she's like, you know, I kind of already knew. I just needed to see the proof. And so that was enough for her. She saw it. Now if she continues on. This is truly on her at this point. But I feel like at this point she gets a message. And um, yeah. That will probably be the last time we see him on the show. Let's hope so anyway. Um, so after um, Meredith consoles her, um, and also as this is happening, Angie's asking Bronwyn, should I go and console her? And Bronwyn's like, eh, it might be too many cooks in the kitchen. Because that is true. Might might be. And also too, considering that um, Meredith and Angie don't really get along it probably was best the way it happened. But hopefully, I'm speaking directly to you, Meredith. You better not try to throw this in Angie's face later on. Because Angie was genuinely trying to do the right thing. And I feel like she was. I don't think she was trying to be messy at all at this moment. Anyway. So then from there, um, also, we Brittany's not mad at um, Brittany was just mad at, you know, the situation. Um, and then we do see a lighter scene where Mary and Angie, they're holding the flag together and they're vibing. And Angie's trying to dance because, like, <laughs> Mary's like, can you can you dance? And so Ang Angie tries. She's like, girl, follow my lead. You're, you're on the three and four. You need to be on the one and two. <laughs> Wait, no, the one and three count. She was on the one three count said the two, like the two four I, I don't know she was the, the count wasn't counting y'all know how like you know you have people who clap and you have people who are just doing the direct and you have someone's like 
Like, they're just not on the right thing. Angie, apparently, I guess, was doing that. And Mary's like, hold on, let me help you out. And then they just started, oh, my gosh. I want to see more of this friendship because Angie and Mary, they look like they were having a blast. And also, too, I will say this. It's just great to see Mary. Mary seems actually like looks like she's having fun filming. Like, I think maybe the apprehension was Mary did not want to film with. Um, I don't think Mary liked um, Mary didn't like um, Jen Shaw. And then the lady will never talk about again. The reason why a lot of unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of us, we don't watch the show anymore because the other cast member that they had on this show. Um, and then that led to her hiatus. Um. Yeah, I think this is the right cast where it makes sense for Mary to like kind of be herself a little bit more, like be more open and not just like her wacky self. Um, but anyway, moving on. So we let's get to the meat and potatoes of this episode as it concludes. Okay, so then we see that Brawlin is actually talking to Lisa. Because Lisa goes to talk to her and asks how the museum was. And she's like, yeah, the museum was okay. And um, then the producers show that Bronwyn actually talked to Melly about... She didn't say exactly what um, Heather and Lisa said. But just said, like, yeah, next time you... Because I guess Melly was insecure about her, the clothes and stuff that she wears. And... I don't know if that was a whole conversation. I think it might have been like that conversation. And so, um, but anyway, Bronwyn does mention like, yeah, I overheard some things about you, about you and Nordstrom's. And so she was like, you know, at the end of the day, though, just simply ask Lisa next time you see her. Bronwyn. I love it. I love it. Because you can see the setup. She is setting her up. And I love it. I love it. And so the um so then Bronwyn mentions the lead so that she talked to Melly uh about the outfits like and you know, that was one of the things that she did at the museum. And Melly heard her name. And then Meredith was like, don't let them do that to you. And Melly went directly over there, beeline over there. And asked Lisa about it. She's like, so I heard you said something about how I dress in Nordstrom's. And then it left Lisa no choice but to mention what was said. And of course, Melly is like, how could you do that? Why would you do that? It's not cool. And um, Bronwyn, because um, then Lisa tries to say, yeah, we all did that. Like, it just was a joke. It was just for fun. Nothing serious. It wasn't serious. And then Bronwyn was like, oh, so when I do the same thing talking about um, Whitney and it not being so serious, I can't do that because I'm not y'all. Okay. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> she called out the hypocrisy. And it is hypocritical. She's like, we literally were all doing the same thing. We were all in that car talking trash about the other ladies. So no one here is innocent when it comes to that. I was like. There you go. And there it is. And um, Bronwyn is letting both Lisa and Heather know. She basically is letting them know I'm not the one or two. And Heather is hearing it, but she's not really in the conversation yet. She's like, yeah. Um, so if you can do that, I can do that. And that goes for Heather as well. Uh, like, we, we can't have it both ways. And Lisa, because Lisa knows there's nothing else she can say because she got caught and she got set up and cleared. And Lisa apologizes to her, which, by the way, I think that was the first time I've ever seen Lisa apologize on this show. 
<laughs> Braun went and had her shook. I was like, dang, I have never seen her apologize. She apologized to her quickly. Because then even like um, Meredith tried to like shoot her some bail. And Braun was like, well, you weren't even there. So you can't really speak on that. Like, And she's like, and also too, how would you feel? And then basically Braun was like, how would you feel if like those shoes were on the other foot? You would feel a way because you literally are beefing with Angie about the same thing. So what are we talking about? And then Heather, not Heather, but Lisa, because she has nothing to say to her, to her face. She does nothing but apologizes. But in her confessional, she's like, yeah, I did speak up a little bit. Did you expect me to throw a glass? I'm only going to do that for me. I was like, girl, I know you think you thought that you ate right there. You did not. <laughs> you did not. You're actually kind of reinforcing what Whitney's been saying, what Heather's, not what Heather, but um, what um, Angie's been saying, and also right now what Bronwyn's been saying. You're not doing yourself any favors for what you just said right there. I hope you know that. Anyway, so then um, Heather enters the chat, and she's just like, oh, but also as Lisa apologizes, Bronwyn's not buying it. She has this look on her face like, girl. <laughs> She's like, girl. I know you ain't trying to play in my face right now. That was the look that she had. I was like, oh my gosh, she is getting me. And this whole entire time. So Heather chimes in because, you know, she got entered in by um, Bronwyn. And. Bronwyn is clearing them both. Neither of them have nothing to say. They can't say nothing back to her. And she's like, yeah, and next time you need to learn how to address me properly. And only thing that Heather can do is do her confessional gangster thing. But I don't know who she thinks she is, this, that, and this. And, uh, and um, Heather's like, I just feel a way that you have such strong opinions and you're new here. And she's like, I can have strong opinions just like you have strong opinions. None of us know anyone like that, that all the way. So the the field is even. And honestly, I'm going off of what my friend, someone who was friends with me longer than you has been saying. So I was going off of what she said. I was like, oh. <laughs> Bronwyn ate left no crumbs. I was like, oh my gosh. And... As all this is happening, by the way, Whitney's observing and Whitney's like, honestly, I do love that Heather is, you know, has my back, but I feel like this aggression towards her is very misdirected. She, I feel like it's, a, it's the lingering Von Teese thing happening. And so anyone that's new, she's addressing her a certain way, but... Heather quickly found out Bronwyn's not the one or two when it comes to that. So I don't know what she's going to do about that. I don't know if she's going to try to sabotage her. Hopefully she does not because Bronwyn, you just put a target on your back. But looks like you also did the smart thing ahead of time and got you some allies already. And the way you're moving, you're moving like you've been on this show for five seasons. And I love it. <laughs> but you are playing a dangerous game for being new and doing that. That is bold. But maybe it helps that you have that actual true relationship with um, Lisa. And also, too, you're one of the few people on the show that actually has the coins. And money talks. Similar to how, and honestly, this just shows me how I really wish. Because Angie... So Angie was moving like this, like when she was a friend of the season before for the most part, but not really. She kind of was moving like this towards the end, but at the beginning she was being kind of pick me-ish. And Brahma just made, made it known, she's like, look, I know you're used to like your friends being pick me, but I'm not a pick me kind of girl. You wanted to hang out with me. I'm the one who was like, who are you when I first met you? Let's not get that twisted. And I just love it. I'm like, ooh. Because Brown was making it clear, like, look, I don't really need this show. I just want to be on the show. There's a difference. I know she didn't say all that, but I feel like all what she did just right here, she said all that. 
I don't know. I just, oh, uh, I, yeah, three episodes. I'm already in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Whole girl, don't disappoint me now. Don't disappoint me. Anyway, though, that does conclude this episode. Though this was, this was good. I was interested the whole entire time. I think I'm actually going to go back and watch the episode again because it was good. It was really, really good. Like, I'm enjoying Salt Lake City so far. I, I right now it's the best one of the three. Ah, it's better than it's definitely better than um, Orange County. Cause child, if Tamara went, if Tamara and Gina went, maybe that one will be better. But not. I guess Gina could get demoted to friend of because I don't really have I don't really hate her, but she don't really bring nothing to the show, in my opinion. Um, and then New York, I'm still unsure about it, you know, but it was just premiere the other day. So we'll see on that. And then Potomac is coming back on Sunday. And I'm nervous about that because Candy Girl ain't going to be on there this season. And I don't know how that's going to transpire. And hopefully it just isn't as toxic as it was last season. Anyway, but well that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.